The purpose of this video tutorial is to show how to import loads through use of an Excel file into Adapt Builder. And the most common approach or usage case for this type of um, input would be if you have a podium slab or a transfer slab with ha which has several loads, either line or point loads. They might be for bearing walls or for shear walls where you're modeling in force couples and we have the ability to model point and line loads um, from an Excel file and import those into a builder model. This is much faster and more efficient than manually entering all the loads in the graphical interface. So we're first going to take a look at the structure of the Excel file and we'll look at the point load file first. The first row in the file is used to assign a user defined header. So in this case we have a few headings here um, that are test or TST just as an example. The first column of the file indicates the load case name and in this model we have dead loads, live loads, and roof live load. The second column would indicate the X coordinate of the point load and we also have the Y coordinate of the point load and then we have our loading data. So this is the force um, FX, FY, and FZ and these would follow positive sign convention for uh, builders. So a positive value here would be a load downward. A positive value here would be a load in the uh, right direction and then a positive value here would be a load in the upward direction in plan view in the modeling interface. And then again the moments also follow positive sign convention where input loads are clockwise positive about the different axes. These are moments about the x-axis, y-axis, and the z-axis. The line load file is similar in structure with one minor difference. Again we have the load case name, we have the start point for the line load, the x and y coordinates, and the end point for the line load, x and y coordinates, and then again we have the f X, FY, and FZ, and the MXX, MYY, MZZ. So we're going to import both uh, spreadsheets into our model uh, in order to load the slab. We'll first start from the file menu. We're going to select import loads in XLS file, and we're going to navigate and just browse to that file. So I'll go to my desktop location. The folder will um, contain that file. We have to set the units that we're importing. So we're using US units in the model interface. This is the current plane and the program is going to import these loads into this plane. But we want to make sure that we select the right units and the right load type. If I select next the program will show us a preview of what loads are going to be imported. And then this preview box can be shifted downward and also you can use your arrows on your keyboard to move left and right and also up and down. You cannot edit the loads in this box. You would have to edit the loads in the um, raw data file in Excel. If we select next we have the option to map the load cases. So for example if the load cases that are written in the Excel file need to map to a different name of a load case the program will allow the mapping to take place. So here we'll select live load for dead load, we'll select dead load, or for dead, dead load. And then for the roof live load, I'm not going to map that. I'm going to create a new load case in the program or in the model called RLL. And I'll also choose to um, move the location of the set of loads that I'm going to import. We'll select end. And I'm going to select my first point here and my second point for the move might be here and that will shift the loads into a new position and we now see we have the point loads assigned to this uh, slab. If I go to the load case library you can see we've included a new load case called RLL and to view the loads again we can use the select set view items under the loading tab to view the loads that have been inserted into the model. Now in this case this is RLL2 because previously I, I had imported an RLL1 into the uh, model. So this sequentially just counts up when we import new um, loads with unique 
uh, load cases that or load case names that might match an existing load case name. So we'll go ahead and just turn off the loads in this case and we're going to do this for line loads. So I'll go to export or excuse me import loads in XLS file. We'll browse to the line loads, change the unit name or unit type and select line load. We again have a preview and we'll map these loads again to live load and to dead load. We're going to move the imported loads. So I'm going to move these from this point down to let's say a point here, just some arbitrary point. I'll select my snap tools. I'll go from this point to this point. That moves the line loads and let's just refresh the view here. We now have the line loads that were added to the model from the XLS file. And what's uh, different about this approach is that if you've ever modeled using the graphical input, you have to re be, be repetitive in how you model at the exact position. For example, for this live load, if you have a dead load, a live load, and a roof live load at the exact same position, you enter three different unique loads, so you replicate the input three times. In this case, we can see that for this particular load, if I double click on this, this is going to be dead load, but we also have a live load. There's a live load, and then I also have a roof live load at the same position. If I can find that, I can also filter that by turning on line load and here there's only dead and live so there is no roof live load for the lines but this allows us for easier import of loads into our model where we have um, repetitive loads and uh, several loads in a transfer podium or, or other slab condition. If you have any questions please contact support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.